Make way for the release of a 10-year inmate. He has waited- I want to do my own intro. Right. Okay, let me just do my thing. Hey everyone, what is up? Walang kugurap, it's your boy Erwin. Welcome Sup. to Winnovate and here is... So you want to main Teresa, the executor. of a 10-year inmate. Consumed by pain and hatred, revenge becomes the only key to redemption. The Empire can burn! In this episode, we have a special guest, the executor himself, the Rizzler, fresh from the iron bars of the Manan prison, hungry for salads and chips, I and in terrible done. need of a girlfriend. <laughs> that was uncalled for. A chance to release the depression. <laughs> Buddy of Smith is the Rizla's passive and is responsible for his toughness. The more of his health is lost, the tougher he becomes. Every 2% of missing HP is converted to a percentage of damage reduction. This is capped at 40%, however. Teresla cannot in any way increase his attack speed. Body of Smith converts every 1% of Teresla's attack speed to a point of physical damage. Let me demonstrate further. Here is Teresla at level 4 without any equipped items. If we go to the hero stats page, we can see that an additional 21 is added to his base attack damage. We also see that his attack speed is pegged at 0 0.8. Now, let us purchase an item that adds attack speed to heroes, say for example, a Demon Hunter Sword. In the current meta, it adds 35 physical attack damage and 25% attack speed to the wielding hero. Now, we should be expecting an additional 60 to the overall damage of Teresla based from the skill's description. We go back to the hero stats page and see an updated attack damage of 81, which does equate to what we are expecting. His first active skill is Revenge Strike. It is his only ranged attack and it also causes an increase in Teresa's movement speed if the skill damages an enemy. If it hurts more than one enemy, the first target it does damage to will receive additional damage after a few seconds. While it's possible to spam the skill during the early stage of the game, the skill is more notably useful in certain scenarios and I would recommend in using the skill on either one of these three. Use it to increase your movement speed and engage with the enemy during team fights. Use it to help chase and finish an opponent, as the damage that Revenge Strike deals to an enemy is dependent on the HP that the opposing hero has lost. Or use it to slow down the movement speed of an enemy who chases you, and at the same time, increase yours to evade a likely death. Execution Strike is my main offensive skill. It's a series of three close-range attacks that deal massive damage. The animation might relatively be slow and constant all throughout the game, but my skill's damage output definitely compensates for the lack of speed. 
in the way I execute these attacks. The first two attacks will deal damage to a small fan-shaped area. The third deals twice as much damage and slows down my targets. This effect can be stacked with other slow effects from equipment and my ally skills. What is also good about this is that I am able to carry out the assault and move in between each of the attacks. Penalty Zone is his ultimate skill. The Rizla lunges into an area and damages and slows enemies that are caught within range. He also creates a torture chamber-like area on the battlefield in the process. It is nothing like the Fifty Shades of Grey playroom, but the scaffold that Penalty Zone creates hooks and pulls enemies towards the scaffold center for several times. Each time an enemy gets pulled, that very same enemy also receives additional damage. Prioritize Execution Strike over Revenge Strike. Keep in mind to always allocate one point on Penalty Zone whenever it becomes available. Terizla falls under the Fighter category and here are a couple of build variations that you can choose to tinker and play with. Overall, your playstyle defines how you would build Terizla's equipment for the duration of the game. The core items, especially in the early game however, should focus more on cooldown reduction and physical attack damage. Terizla's passive that makes him tougher as he loses health might suggest a possibility of building Terizla as a tank, but doing so will only prevent his other skills from reaching maximum potential. So I would, I would highly recommend Blade of Despair. Excellent choice. And Followed I, by one more Blade of Despair and another Blade of just Despair. Kidding, guys. Actually, no. just Blades no. of Despair. No. We all understand that you're eager to take revenge upon the Manian Empire, but in order for you to become effective at the battlefield, you will need the right <laughs> tool. Okay. Terizla is sluggish, not just his attack speed, but also his movement speed. The first item you might want to consider buying would be your footgear. If you want to play more defensively during the early game, the additional armor that warrior boots give makes you sustain damage in your lane more, whereas if you are more like the aggressive type or if you are paired against an opponent in a lane who forces you to spam your skills a lot, then magic shoes will help you do just that. You might also want to consider building a Bloodlust Axe immediately from the get-go, especially if your chosen battle spell is Sprint. But only choose this route if you play defensively and if you are experienced in playing Terizla. His core items are Bloodless Axe and Endless Battle. Terizla relies heavily on his skills and the spell vamp that Bloodless Axe provides helps him sustain damage and survive in combat despite his slow attacks. Bloodlust Axe also reduces the cooldown of Teresa's skills, allowing him to spam his skills more. Endless Battle basically provides everything that Teresa needs for battle, attack damage, cooldown reduction, and movement speed. It also gives Teresa some physical lifesteal so he can still continue to siphon health from his opponent even when his skills are on cooldown. If your team is playing defensively during mid-game and mages from the opposing team are becoming problematic, Rose Gold Meteor is your typical mid-game opener. It would give Teresa an added defense to both physical and magical damage and it will help minimize burst damage while allowing Teresa to be a threat to enemies himself. Blade of the Heptasis will be the exact counterpart if the problematic ones are dealing physical damage instead. If your team is doing very well, however, Teresa's favorite Blade of Despair. Exactly. Blade of Despair should be the next weapon of choice. When you reach late game, this is when you should build more on defense, as the lack of attack speed will prove to be troublesome for Terizla. Wings of the Apocalypse Queen, Athena Shield, or Brute Force Breastplate is perfect for playing defensively. I like fighter and tank emblems. I prefer the fighter emblem as I am a fighter by heart. If you choose fighter, allocate 
there are three points on bravery, three points on invasion, and one point on festival of blood to maximize my survivability. On the other hand, should you choose tank emblem instead, allocate three points on vitality, three points on inspire, and one point on tenacity. My passive skill synergizes really well with tenacity, and it makes me tankier than I already am. For battle spells, Sprint and Flicker are the most ideal spells to use so that you may be able to engage or disengage with the enemies with ease. An increase in speed will also increase the range of execution strike. Thus, this mechanic synergizes with Sprint very well. Using Flicker, on the other hand, in combination with Penalty Zone, is strategic during team fights. This battle spell makes it easier for you to land your ultimate on opponents in the heat of an exchange. At the start of the game, rush to the top lane and engage with the enemy minions at the section between level 1 and level 2 turrets. Execution Strike can easily clear the wave allowing you for more room to farm at the enemy territory. This tactic forces your opponent to stay on the lane to prevent your minions from attacking his turret. If your opponent decides to leave the lane so he could farm, he will lose experience that he could have possibly received from top lane minions. Maintain pressure by doing the same to the next minion waves. For this play to be effective and optimized, make sure you're playing solo at the top lane. Otherwise, your teammate at the top lane wouldn't receive any experience when you intercept enemy minions. Sure, there are times when you will encounter opponents who are familiar with this play, and expect that they will be waiting for you somewhere at the bush. Simply clear the first wave like usual, and continue to push for pressure by intercepting the next waves to maintain the early game upper hand. Teresla might be a melee fighter, but that doesn't mean to say he can't deal damage through walls. Your opponents will not be standing still when they're getting hit, and they will even try to dodge your skills. The delay in skill animations will make it challenging for you to land Turizla's skill shots. You would be able to damage your opponents more efficiently, however, if you initiate with Penalty Zone. This way, you would be able to follow up with a series of execution strikes and land most instances of the skill. If that isn't enough, Use Revenge Strike to help secure the kill. So here we are, almost at the very end. Teresa, any final thoughts before we end the video? Oh, REVENGE! Is there anything else you would like to say besides your undying rage? I like cheeseburgers. Mm -hmm. I don't really like salad and okay. chips. Uh, anything else? I can also kill Thanos with my hammer. Strong words coming from a cheeseburger. What? There have it, folks. My hammer is as strong as me all near. I mean, as strong as the upgrade store. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a comment, hit like and subscribe, and make sure you hit the notification bell to see more videos like this one. Until next time, once again, my name is Erwin, and I'm gonna see you in the next video.